and let us all that we can to build a better future. So let's go ahead and get started with our next segment. So this is a Chicago story, but also I got two videos from Case Study QB because this is a national story as well, because this is a, an ongoing problem that's going to be impacting everyone across the country. Thousands of Chicagoans could face evictions next month. Uh, this group is go uh, going door to door to keep people in their homes. So uh, the Chicago Flats Initiative is connecting renters and homeowners to eviction and foreclosure prevention programs. We don't want to see what happened in 2008 housing crisis repeated. And the sad fact is it probably might happen again. And I'm everyone know your rights as a renter and a homeowner. All right. Uh, Albany Park, as many as 21,000 Chicagoans could be hit with eviction notices after Illinois eviction moratorium expires July 24th, according to housing organizers. Now, a citywide coalition has launched the, the Chicago Flats Initiative, a door-to-door -door outreach program connecting two, three, and four flat owners uh, and renters to assistance programs that can keep them in their homes. When I drive to the studio, I've been seeing more people in tent cities living underneath the viaducts and the bridges. It's getting bad. And it's getting really bad. Businesses are being shut down, too. The effort is coming from community groups from across Chicago that long have organized around affordable housing. Organizers are passing out flyers detailing the Illinois Housing Department Authority's Emergency Rental Assistance Program, which can provide eligible people up to 12 months of unpaid rent and to three months of future rent with a maximum grant of $25,000. Uh, the group also is telling neighbors about neighborhood housing services of Chicago programs that include foreclosure prevention resources to keep homeowners uh, of two or, or four flats in their homes, HUD certificate finance counseling services and home buyer education classes, competitive mortgages, home purchase assistance up to $20,000 and home improvement grants up to $25,000, health and safety inspections, construction and management services. Evictions and foreclosures are expected to hit low and moderate income families in Chicago's black and Latino neighborhoods, uh, the hardest according to the Lawyers Committee for Better Housing. Mind you, we've actually interviewed people from Lawyers uh, for Better Housing on our show way early on during the early days of Hardlands Media. It's getting rough out there, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, in helping neighbors uh, stabilize their housing, the Chicago Flats Initiative is supporting the larger goal of preserving the city's two, three, four flat buildings. Um, those buildings make up 26% of Chicago's housing stock overall and 35% of all rental housing, according to the DePaul University study. We don't want to see what happened in 2008 housing crisis repeated, said Diana Lemus, uh, vice president of the board for committees, United, one of the groups going door to door. The foreclosures during the crisis led to the displacement of black and immigrant families from the city and in gentrifying areas. We don't want to see that happen again. Um, people who are committed to staying in their neighborhoods, <clears throat> excuse me, on a humid summer day, volunteers with Communities United knocked on doors near North Spalding and West Pensacola Avenues as part of their outreach. Communities United has fought for affordable housing in Albany Park and surrounding neighborhoods for decades. The group has already covered at least 50 blocks in Albany Park. If property owners and renters don't answer the door, the group members leave behind a bag with flyers in Spanish and English explaining renters' rights, resources for rental and mortgage assistance, homeowner programs, how to get vaccinated against coronavirus, and more. Amongst the group uh, that that they were uh, Merce Alde and her daughter Alexandria, 17. Uh, Merce Alde uh, has lived in Albany Park for 27 years and her daughter is a student at Roosevelt High School. Many times people don't know where to get this kind of help to begin with or they don't have immigration papers and they fear asking or seeking help, all they said in Spanish. But if they don't know what kind of help, uh, kind of help that's available, families have nothing but stress and will often move when they can't afford to stay, especially with the loss of jobs in the pandemic. That displacement hurts children uh, who lack stability for their education and development, all he said, which is why she volunteers to help other neighborhoods. Now, again, I urge everyone to read this article in its entirety. Chicago Block Club does fantastic work. But let's play this other video from Case Study QB. Folks, this is a nationwide problem, and our Democratic and Republican lawmakers don't give a damn. Play this video. Across the country, some major U.S. cities are seeing a surge in homelessness. It's largely due to financial troubles many people faced over the past year because of the pandemic. In Denver, Colorado, in particular, they've seen a 30% increase in the homeless population there. Now, the Mile High City is, is trying out a, a new and unique solution to try and address the spike. NBC's Dasha Burns now with more on what they hope could be a model for other cities. Tucked into a church parking lot in suburban Denver is Alan Bowe's new neighborhood. I was living in an apartment for 15 years came home one night to a note on the door that said order to quit in the middle of the pandemic you yes. were left without a home yes you'll find stories like Allen's across the city whose estimates show a 30 percent surge in homelessness during the pandemic 
But with the crisis came an unlikely solution. City-sanctioned campsites launched in December 2020. Clean, colorful rows of tents provide people a bed to call their own, complete with 24-7 security and daily meals. We have housing navigation, we have employment navigation, we have an outreach doctor, an outreach nurse that comes in. We have mental health professionals. This newest site can house 40 people. Their other site can house 60, but with thousands still unsheltered, the goal is to expand into many more parts of Denver. You were a little skeptical at first. I just didn't find anything, uh, you know, humane about encouraging folks to go outdoors. But it was one, the pandemic, and two, looking at the model that showed me it would be a thoughtful, well-managed situation, and we had to give it a try. That trial run already proving successful. But the ultimate goal is to get people out of tents and into homes. What the space does is it provides the break from having to claw your way to a restroom or to a shower to wash your clothes and once your basic needs are met what you see is this natural progression into okay what now that break meant everything to alan why is it important to have a place like this when you're in between all right let's let's play the flat a last part it's only 12 seconds but it's i think it's important we get his final word in homes you always know you got that hub to come home to you know where you're going to sleep every night. You know where you're going to sleep. Dasha Burns, NBC News. So the Biden administration has the power to fix this, but they choose not to. But, hey, but don't worry. We made like 100 tents. So, you know, it's like, you know, it's one of the things. It's like, it's like, is this better than not having them? Sure. Is it completely underestimating, under talking? It, America needs to get out of this mindset of. This stuff, we're kicking these, we're kicking too many cans down the road. It's not going to end well. It already isn't ending well. And we're still complaining about stuff that doesn't matter. E. Heller, History of the World, Part One, with the Roman Senate. Senators, shall we help feed and take care of the poor? And they all say, screw the poor. I'm probably screwed up the entire quote, but y'all get what I'm saying. Again, it's like, go read about the late Roman Empire, you will figure out quite quickly that an enormous amount of things are overlapping with our time. It's all shockingly, depressingly familiar. And Miguel H., I think I'll give you the final word. This is a so-called first world country? I guess so, buddy. I guess so. Was well, that- we have a military, so we'll beat up your dad if you say we're not. <laughs> 